Hey, it's Friday. Time for your IU history briefing. Uh, so I'm not in a typical sort of space today. Uh, I'm clearly down in the basement somewhere weird. Uh, but it's not all that weird. I'm going to tell you about it because what I'm actually in is a nuclear fallout shelter. Yep, that's right. Otherwise known as the basement of Teeter. Uh, so back in the 1960s, uh, IU was, uh, well actually Monroe County was one of 10 uh, counties uh, that were selected around the country uh, to set up a, a nuclear fallout shelter program. And so in conjunction with IU, they decided they were gonna set up this program. They had a total, they, they managed to figure out on the IU campus in suitable nuclear fallout shelters, uh, which were a total of about 45 buildings around campus that met the requirements, they could house 74,500 people for two weeks. Now, what does it take to house 74,500 people for two weeks? Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, so if you take a space like this, uh, the, the basement uh, and hallways area of Teeter, and if you look behind me, you can see there's another hallway down here. This is a, a pretty wide, pretty big hallway. All these areas are currently under construction in the building, so um, can't quite get in there to show you, but if you've been to Teeter and you know the tunnel system down here, you're aware of, of how all this works. Uh, they had decided, they had mapped it all out, they figured out they could fit a little over 2,500 people in the basement of Teeter, down in these tunnels uh, and in these areas down here for two weeks. Uh, so they had, they also had to then fill these tunnels with two weeks worth of food and water. Uh, and so they managed to put big barrels of water uh, and they went and got food. Uh, in today's dollars, uh, the federal grant money that came in, they spent $1.5 million outfitting food, water, medical supplies for these 74,000 people to be on campus in case of nuclear attack. And the problem wasn't a nuclear attack on Indianapolis didn't worry them because the winds would blow all the fallout towards Ohio. They were actually worried about a nuclear attack uh, on St. Louis uh, or somewhere west of here that would then cause the fallout to come here. Uh, also, uh, what was then the Department of Safety Education in the School of Health, Physical Education, and Rec creation, which today I think is actually uh, the uh, safety management program in the School of Public Health actually set up a demonstration family shelter on campus as well and they used to teach a civil defense school every fall uh, that folks could come to and learn how to build shelters and, and fill them all out. Um, so a couple other fun facts. Uh, the basement of geology uh, actually had a full medical field hospital in it uh, and that medical field hospital was stored in the basement down there uh, all the way up through the 1990s. Uh, the current director of emergency management, Ken Long, uh, when he first started here at IU, you in the 90s, one of the first jobs he got was decommissioning that and figuring out what things could be sold off, what needed to be thrown away, and that field hospital was still in existence in a basement uh, down there through the 90s. Um, so that was one of the other uh, fun things about it. Um, also, uh, there was a plan for the state government uh, in case of nuclear attack in Indianapolis to move down here to Bloomington and take over Ballantyne Hall. That would become the new head of state government, the governor's office, and all the government uh, offices would be in there uh, during that time as well. But probably my favorite thing about this story is something called the survival biscuit. Uh, and so part of that $1.5 billion that was uh, spent, uh, $170,000 of the time uh, that was spent was on providing survival biscuits. And this is the description of the survival biscuit uh, that all the students and local community members would be eating for two weeks uh, in case of uh, an emergency. The food allotted is survival biscuit and a carbohydrate supplement. Five pounds of the biscuit, which looks like a graham cracker and tastes something like an animal cracker, is very high in mineral and vitamin content, is allotted per person daily. The carbohydrate supplement resembles a piece of lemon candy. So they're really trying to sell this as, you know, gonna be great and it would have been horrible. Imagine being in the teeter basement with 2,500 of your closest friends for two weeks, not being able to go outside, uh, not being able to have good air circulation, uh, not necessarily having access to all of the, the uh, amenities and things that, that you might need. Um, so would have been long and miserable. Really glad we never had to use that plan. The other ironic piece of this, uh, because for those of y'all that know me, 
me, you know, uh, I love emergency management and that's my, my military field. Uh, and also that I, I work in uh, veteran services. The guy in charge of all this at the time, the assistant dean of students and director of veterans affairs for the university, uh, was also the director of the civil defense plan. Uh, so all of those jobs fell under the position and the role that I'm sort of uh, in now, minus the emergency management piece. Uh, but, you know, it, it's kind of fun to see uh, how these things sort of still exist on our campus in some way. So anyway, there's your briefing for today. Uh, I'll see y'all again next week, and hopefully uh, maybe not from the basement of somewhere. You never know. <laughs>